dropped, and it's showtime from downtown. What a bag. A shot, they score! Trinkley Cutter scores! What a stop by Hellebach. Nikolai Ehlers on the face off! Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets, hosted by Jets TV. Welcome back to Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets, our second episode of Season 4 and Episode 112 overall. Uh, that's actually the most podcast we've ever done. Uh, and then next week, it will also be the most podcast we've ever done. Uh, I'm your host, Tyler Esquivel, joined by uh, Jets TV's Mitchell Clinton and 680 CJOB's Paul Edmonds. Uh, guys, uh, it was a busy weekend uh, for the Winnipeg Jets, a rare preseason road trip out west, uh, but it was good to get on the on the road and just get back into the swing of things. I think we can all agree on that. The Winnipeg Jets falling 4-3 to three to the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday night, and then they followed that up with a 3-2 loss to the Vancouver Canucks. And while the losses, you know, obviously aren't the results that you're wanting, uh, there's a lot of good in what was there, and, and the results aren't exactly what you're you're keying in on here. So I'll start with you, Paul. Uh, just what did you see from the game in Edmonton? Uh, it was a, a pretty solid mix of vets and uh, young players trying to make an impact, but just what did you see from the Winnipeg Jets on Saturday night? Well, first off, Tyler, I want to go back to a point that you made in your preamble, and that is that I felt that it was a rarity, and it is, for the Jets to get on the road and play two preseason games you know, in, in an exhibition schedule and go back to back at that. But it also, I think, helps accelerate the routine that these players are going to get in. So from that standpoint, that's good. Uh, the Edmonton Oiler game, listen, there was a resolve that the Winnipeg Jets showed. I mean, they fell behind by a couple of goals. They ended up tying it up. They ended up losing by one goal late. But I just like the way that the top line, if you're looking for good signs to say, okay, are they ready to go? So... That top line that particular night was Ehlers, Shifley, and Connor. And I thought that they were engaged in the game. I thought that they pushed the pace when they were out there. I thought they battled uh, McDavid and Dry Settle when they were up against them head to head and fared fairly well, as you would expect. The other part was the, the bottom line. The fourth line was driven by Dominic Tony Nato. And I thought uh, Reichel and then, of course, uh, Malott, uh, Jeff Malott uh, ended up playing very well. I mean, they set the pace early on. So there was a lot to like about that game. Also, I know that there was a goal that was given up on a slap shot that was deflected that Eric Comrie probably would like. But overall, I felt that Eric Comrie played like he finally felt like he belonged in the National Hockey League. And that's a good sign for me because this guy's probably going to get 18 to 20 games along the line this year as the backup for Connor Hellebuck. So to be a little bit more concise, I liked what I saw from the forward group. I liked from the goaltender standpoint what I saw from Eric Comrie. And then you had a pretty good mix of your top four defensemen out there as well, moving the puck and playing. So all in all, it was pretty good in that Edmonton Oilers game that got that weekend started in back-to-back fashion. Mitchell, I'll flip it over to you to discuss the game in Vancouver on Sunday night. Uh, less veterans in the lineup for the Winnipeg Jets, but uh, Jeff Malott, like Paul mentioned, had a, a pretty solid weekend series uh, for the Winnipeg Jets. What did you see from Vancouver? Yeah, I mean, you, you talked Jeff Malott, Christian Reichel as well, the two goal scorers for the Winnipeg Jets on Sunday uh, against the Vancouver Canucks. And really for them, like you said, it was a, it was a carryover of just how well that they – played on Saturday just a really good weekend for both of them and they they both kind of said you know like this is something that you know it's a chance for them to really show the the coaching staff this is my identity so that when a call up opportunity comes maybe they're the ones that get the call uh the other thing about the Vancouver day that I that I should mention is while we were in the hotel uh before the game we actually saw former jet Nick Patan yes <laughs> very nice of him to say to say hi, we kind of caught up quickly. And then, of course, he goes and scores for the Vancouver Canucks on Saturday. So um, it was always kind of good to see him. He played over 100 games for the Winnipeg Jets, as fans will remember. Uh, the other thing that kind of stood out to me was, uh, and he stood out throughout the entire uh, training camp, was Ev- Evgeny Svechnikov. Um, really honest comments from him after the game. Um, him and Pierre-Luc Dubois played together in junior on a line, so... Uh, this was Svechnikov's first chance to play with Dubois in the preseason, and he was uh, had Andrew Kopp on the other side. But Svechnikov said this was the, the first game in camp where he kind of felt it a little bit. Um, first back-to-back, he's like, you know, there's always 
uh, a challenge with that, playing a back-to-back um, in, in training camp. So he had that going on, and, you know, it was a bit of a challenge for him. But Paul Maurice said it was also a challenge for everybody in that lineup. There was a lot of guys, especially in your quote-unquote bottom six uh, forwards that, you know, played the night before at Edmonton. They're playing in, in uh, Vancouver. So it was a little bit of a challenge for them. Paul Maurice said they just didn't really have their legs. But again, uh, Paul Edmonds talked about the resolve that the Jets showed against Edmonton. They're down uh, 3-1 to Vancouver, also in the third period. Christian Reichel gets them uh, within a goal. And then, really, in the final couple minutes, a power play for the Winnipeg Jets. And they had a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois had a chance to deflect one past Michael DiPietro, who came on in the third period. And then Andrew Kopp also had a one-timer. Uh, opportunity. So there were chances to tie the game. Ultimately, the Vancouver ends up uh, with the 3-2 win. But I think for Paul Maurice and the coaching staff, they saw what they needed to see out of some players in that weekend set. Mitchell, the Winnipeg Jets announcing their uh, roster cut down on Monday. Uh, the following names uh, have been processed down to the Manitoba Moose, or with the intention of the first three I'm going to list off. Uh, Austin Paganski, Luke Johnson, and Mike Isamont uh, all have to clear waivers. Mm-hmm. Uh Christian Reichel, Jeff Malott, Jonathan Kovacevic, Declan Chisholm, Leon Gavanka, Simon Lundmark, and then uh, in between the pipes, Mikhail Burden and Arvid Holm, all assigned to the Manitoba Moose. Just uh, any names on there stick out for you, and just uh, any thoughts on this? Well, obviously we've uh, mentioned just the performance that uh, Christian Reichel and Jeff Malott both had um, in the game against the actually in both games against the Oilers and the Canucks over the weekend. So I think they showed really well And Paul Maurice is, I asked him about uh, their performance over the weekend. He just kind of said, you know, they were two guys that, that played well and really did what they needed to do in this training camp, which was make themselves identifiable so that, you know, it, if it comes time for a call, they're looking for a particular type of player. These aren't just names on a piece of paper for Paul Maurice. Now he's seen them play and he's got a real good idea of what they can bring to the table. Jonathan Kovacevic and Declan Chisholm both played their first NHL preseason games this year. And I thought were really good. Uh, Kovacevic was just a real big body presence and was calm with the puck and and moved it quite well. Uh, was paired with Logan Stanley for, for quite a bit, and that could be a fearsome duo for any opposition to go up against. Those are two, uh, two big guys that can also move. Um, Leon Gavaka, obviously, we did a nice feature on him coming out of minicamp, so obviously he's got uh, a big season ahead of him uh, that could potentially see him going to the Olympics, so uh, fingers crossed for him. That's going to be really cool. Simon Lundmark, his first camp in Winnipeg after getting drafted in 2019, Played in the Swedish Hockey League, so he's played pro hockey, but it's still an adjustment to come overseas uh, to North America and play in this style of game. So it was just really good to, to see him and see his game. I thought he, he skates really well uh, and also has the, the capability of moving the puck. It's just uh, obviously he's going to get a chance to do that and play a lot of minutes, and that's the main thing for a lot of these guys that get uh, uh, reassigned. It's all about getting minutes. And then Mikhail Burden and Arvid Holm, two guys that, uh, I mean, obviously the the crease for the Winnipeg Jets, um, especially at the National Hockey League level, was more or less set. Um, But, of course, you know, it's performance-based, as it always is, uh, as head coach Paul Maurice says. So uh, Mikhail Burden, I thought, against the Vancouver Canucks, really settled in after the the difficult start they had on on the first goal. He said his nerves were going pretty good for the first 10 minutes. But after that happened, I thought he, he settled in quite well and made some big stops, uh, had 30 saves. So, I mean, what more can you ask uh, out of your goaltender? So, um, obviously, these guys, all of them want to play in the National Hockey League. That's always going to be their, their first priority. But I think a lot of them also understand the process that's involved. And Paul Maurice was quite, uh, you know, open and transparent throughout the Uh, entire training camp that for a lot of these guys, like I said earlier, it was all about just getting on the radar so that the coaching staff knows what they're getting should a call-up come. Paul, I don't have this on our rundown, but I will quickly get you to touch on it. Uh, Mikhail Burden made his first start uh, in a Winnipeg Jets uniform uh, with the preseason start in Vancouver. Just what did you see from the young uh, Russian goaltender? An important start, Tyler, from a lot of different perspectives. I think when you're looking at 
the trajectory of Mikhail Burden, you're thinking, okay, at some point, this goaltender at 23 years old is going to find a spot with the Winnipeg Jets. It might not be this week. It might not be next week. It might not be next year. But at some point, I think that he is going to play in the National Hockey League. And it will be sooner than later. He's the just in case right now. They've anointed Eric Comrie as the backup. Of course, Eric has been and has been a great soldier for the Winnipeg Jets and been in the organization for quite a while. He's been a great AHL goaltender, and now it's incumbent on him to make that next step. But if something does happen, if by chance there is a struggle or a scuffle, or if there is an injury to one of the two goaltenders, including Connor Hellebuck, well, what do you do? Well, the next guy in line is Mikhail Burden. And with the exception of the, the puck handling, which he's usually pretty adept at, and he led to the, the first goal that ended up being scored by Bo Horvat, and it, the turnover happened to Tanner Pearson in the corner when Burden came out to play the puck. I thought that Burden was very good at rebound control, tracking the puck, but more importantly, I thought that he battled to the top of the crease on Sunday against Vancouver in an attempt to really fight and compete uh, to see pucks. So that's good signs for me. I don't profess to know a lot about the goaltending position because I don't study it like I, I study maybe forwards or defensemen, but I've learned a little bit more about what to look for. And what I saw from Mikhail Burden on Sunday against the Vancouver Canucks in that loss was a goaltender that despite maybe giving up a freebie, uh, held his team in there to give them a chance to come back. And they almost did, as Mitchell mentioned. I really liked him. It's going to be important for him to continue his development at the AHL level, but I would not be surprised, gentlemen, if at some point there was a call-up for Mikhail Burden to play in the National Hockey League this season. Just a quick note on that first goal that you had mentioned. You know, Paul Maurice after the game said, you know, we got to cut that off anyway. So while you don't love the giveaway by Mikhail, and obviously he didn't like it either, you know, it was something that he felt that the rest of the team could have picked up the pieces from and avoided that uh, result altogether. Uh, lastly, Paul, before we get to our interview with Riley Nash this week, uh, Cole Perfetti, he's had a really interesting opportunity uh, through camp, played in every preseason game except the one on uh, Sunday in Vancouver. Uh, just what have you seen of him through camp so far? I think he's kind of an interesting case. Obviously, ha played for the Moose last year when in, in normal times he probably would have been uh, floating around in, in junior uh, as, he, as he should be. But obviously he gets the opportunity in the pros last season and then is looking to make the step this this season to the NHL just what have you seen from the young forward and at 19 years old without the special exemption that exists this year for players that were of major junior eligible age that played in the A they get to play again this year he would be going back again to the OHL and playing as a 19 year old but he'll get an opportunity to play with the Manitoba Moose you know, it's funny because his role will be defined as probably a top six forward with the Winnipeg Jets. And there doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try to move him into a bottom six role. That's not where he's going to be playing. That's not where his skill set suggests he should be. That's not where the scouts wanted the Winnipeg Jets to draft him in the first round because of that skill set. So I think that Cole Perfetti has made an impression in camp. He sure, certainly did last year. World Championship gold medal with Canada, U-20s. Of course, the Manitoba Moose almost ended up being a point-per-game player and probably was one of their best players near the end of the year. He was the top-line center. He's going to go back and do all of that. I felt that we have seen some, some signs of brilliance from Cole Perfetti. We have seen that skill set on display at times, but I've also felt that over the course of the preseason games that he has played, the most recent one being Saturday in Edmonton, that the game at times has been just a little too quick for him. He's a smart kid, of course. We've seen that uh, education-wise would prove that as well in what he did scholastically as a major junior hockey player, but the processing of the game, I think, is going to be a little bit more of an adjustment for him coming up at the that NHL level, even preseason hockey at the NHL level. So not to take anything away from him. I really like the player. I'm really excited for what the years to come will present for Cole Perfetti and the Winnipeg Jets and the fan base to watch him. Uh, but I just think that there's been a real adjustment and learning curve and jumping from the AHL to the NHL, even 
exhibition speed and we've seen that in the last couple of games so best place for him right now is not to assume a bottom six role the best place for him is to go and be that number one guy with the manitoba moose and play in all situations and log a lot of minutes and feel real good about his development and in turn show the winnipeg jets that he's not that far away speaking of logging a lot of minutes uh, you'll enjoy our interview with riley nash she spoke with uh, mitchell and i for about 12 minutes Last Friday after practice, we went over quite a few things, including his time in Winnipeg so far, becoming a new dad. Uh, what else did we talk about, Mitch? Uh, his relationship with his cousin, Kelly Olinick. Yeah, out of nowhere. I was doing the research on that, coming up across that name. That was interesting. So he talks about that. And then also playing in uh, the NCAA with his brother. So we don't want to give away everything, but uh, let's just say it's wide-ranging. Go. Mark Shifley with a one-timer through the seam. Jets. Oh, the save. Potter Hellebuck. Go. Are you ready for takeoff? Are you ready for the return of live in-person NHL hockey? The 21-22 season is just around the corner. Get your tickets now at winnipegjets.com slash tickets. Quarter season plans, single game tickets, and full season seat packages are available. Visit winnipegjets.com slash tickets and buy now. Hi, this is Mark Shifley, and you're listening to Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets. Joined here on Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets by Jets forward Riley Nash. Riley, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I know you're right before we started recording, you're talking about the room we're in. It's nice and warm. Uh, it's been warm in Winnipeg, which I'm sure you're probably not going to get a whole lot of after the next few months. Uh, just uh, what are you what are you thinking as you're heading into a, a, your first Winnipeg winter? Uh, I think ignorance is bliss right now. We <laughs> haven't gone through it, so we don't really know. Um, We've really enjoyed the weather right now. It's been phenomenal. Uh, it still feels like it's like late August. So um, we're just trying to soak that up as much as possible and not even think about what's ahead. So um, I've had my, we got a little eight month old. So I've had him outside quite a bit. And I'm like, don't get used to this, buddy, because you're about to be a hermit <laughs> in the next couple months. <laughs> Sounds like rave reviews for Winnipeg weather. That's what I'm going with. Um, <laughs> Riley, you mentioned you have you have an eight month old at, at at home. What has been the uh, the first year almost of parenting been like for you and your wife? It's been great. Um, he's he's traveled more than I ever have, and probably my entire life. He's been on a plane. It seems like every other week. Which during COVID, some parents out there are probably like, "What are you doing in this job?" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, the first couple months are, you know, they're 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 enjoyable because you have a new little guy, but once they start to show some more emotion and feedback and smiling at you, then that's where I, I, it really kind of hit me. Like, this is, this is pretty awesome. It wasn't just a potato that I needed to eat or that, that just eat and sleep and cry. <laughs> I love that you call so, it a potato. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's so true. It was a little bit more back and forth, and yeah. now he's very much, uh, he's got a great personality, so it's been a lot of fun. Nice. Um, you know, going back to your early days as a hockey player, you played for the Salmon Arm uh, Silverbacks. Um, why, I feel like this should be called like something salmon related. I, I don't really understand the gorilla <laughs> reference. Maybe you can enlighten me as to why. I, I actually have no idea either. I went on the website and I saw the giant gorilla. It's the like, only oh. time in history I've seen a team where we had all purple gear, yeah, purple helmets. Do you still have some of that stuff? I wish. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That purple helmet anyway. Um, so anyway, after Salmon Arm, you had a great season there. You were Rookie of the Year, um, fantastic uh, accolades there. But then you went on to Cornell University, and you actually played with your brother, Brendan. Um, just what was that experience like going down to the, the U.S. and playing, and then uh, sharing that with your family? I actually played a couple games. Like I got called up to Salmon Arm to play a couple games with him. Yeah. So that was a little taste of it, and I really enjoyed that. Um, and then obviously Cornell wasn't a very easy place to get to, so... It made it a lot easier on my parents to come down, my sisters. Um, so we had a lot of visitors, and then just the experience of being able to, you know, live across the across North America with your brother and go to college and share those uh, growing up memories with him. Uh, uh, it was really awesome. On the ice, we we uh, did some pretty good things as well. I think we won our conference championship our last year there. Didn't really have a whole lot of success in the NCAA tournament, but. It's kind of a crapshoot in hockey, so um, that's probably the one thing we wish we would have been able to cement uh, our legacy a little bit more, but all in all, it was just um, one of those things where in life that you, it's really hard to pass an opportunity like that up, so um, we're very fortunate to be able to do that. 
And you mentioned family. I was doing some some digging ahead of this podcast. You probably already know what's coming. Uh, but there is a family connection to Kelly Olenek plays in, in Detroit uh, for in the NBA. How close are you to, and uh, I mean, new contracts for both of you in the offseason? Uh, yeah, up. there was a tweet. Um, I don't know. There was a sarcastic guy in Kamloops, and he said, like, good day for Kamloops products where they signed 37.75 million something dollar deals and he was like the 37 million of it <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny i wanted to throw something sarcastic back at this guy but I just, <laughs> like, he never went on twitter anyway no, um, that's true you know it, we chat every once in a while um his parents still live there he doesn't make it back as often as i think he he wishes but um still pretty unique at, to have you know an nhl guy but even more unique to have a guy from there making the NBA. I think that's, it's, yeah, I think it's the first guy. I mean, I've never heard of any other basketball player from Canlis making it. So um, pretty cool. I guess Steve Nash would be the other big name, but he was from Vancouver, Victoria. So um, yeah, he's done quite well for himself and he could probably buy up half the town if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are you a better basketball player than he is hockey player, or is it flipped? I've never seen him or heard him talk hockey. So I really, think he, yeah. As so, a Canadian kid, eh? Yeah, I don't think he played really growing up. He started. They, they lived in Toronto until he was, I think, like a ten. Yeah. Grade maybe grade yeah grade five six something like that. Um, I think he was basketball. His dad, I think, worked at the uh, university out there and then also helped out the Raptors. So I think it was basketball from the start okay. for him. Yeah, nice. Sense, yeah. I could, you know, I could ball when I was in middle school. Nice. nice. <laughs> Couldn't we all. that translate to me being sick now. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Switching to this side of things with the hockey, you were teammates with Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, just what's it like to sort of reunite with him here in Winnipeg? Yeah, it's fun. It's it's funny. He's the only guy that I knew coming in here. I, I, I didn't. I hadn't crossed paths with anyone else, and you know I've been in the league for a decent number of years. So um, it's always nice to have a familiar face and someone that can kind of show you around. And uh, he likes all the all the foodie spots and grocery stores. So he had a whole list of, of places for us to go and see. So um, it's nice for my wife as well because his girlfriend is here. So. Um, having a connection like that and, and getting to know the other wives and girlfriends, it makes it a little bit easier too. So it's always nice when you see a familiar face when you walk into a new new room with you know twenty something guys in there. So at least some of your jokes land; they can understand <laughs> your personality. <laughs> and you mentioned it's a it's a familiar face. Uh, Dubois obviously changing his number this year for a, a really good reason. He he went into uh, during one of his press conferences about how you know he checked with Columbus on if this was something that would be appropriate and whatnot. So, I guess what what did it mean to you as someone who also played in Columbus and, and what did it mean to you to see when he changed it to, to number eighty? I think that's uh, incredible. Um, I think it shows a lot about him as a person, but it showed a lot about <clears throat> Matisse as a person. Um, just, you know, he was kind of on our taxi squad, played a couple games, but he was around a lot just to, with the nature of the year. And, <laughs> you know, this, it gets said a lot like he was a, you know, when this happens, like, oh, he always had a smile on his face and he worked hard. But, uh, you know, when I was thinking about it, that was one of the things that I was like, this is this is 100% true about him. He, I'd never seen him have a bad day. Um, he'd stay on after for guys that wanted to shoot and work his bag off for those guys. So he's not just standing there, and he actually wanted to get better. And, and uh, yeah, he's just one of those kids that had a, a bright future and um, just a really unfortunate accident. But hopefully that was, you know, it really hit home for, for me personally. And just you never know. And make sure that you enjoy and you work it you work as hard as you possibly can to to get as most as much out of your career and enjoy it because yeah, at the end of the day who knows when it's when your time's up and uh if you're not enjoying it then what's the point in even doing it so it was a good good reminder and yeah it was uh very tragic but hopefully the ripple effects of his life um far away kind of what happened it's really well said. Yeah. You talk about enjoying your career. What was it about Winnipeg that made you think that this should be the next stop on, on your playing career? 
I said, I, I want to challenge myself and take on the worst winter possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a team that's obviously had a lot of success and has been really close for a number of years here. So um, having that opportunity to where you get on a team where you think you feel you have a legitimate chance at winning it to start the year is obviously something if you can can make work then you got to take that step so um yeah we're just super excited about the team that's here the, and what they've built um and just kind of like the future i think the time is kind of now to win and, and that's what their the expectation and that's kind of how they're built so yeah we're just excited for the challenge of that Last one for me, but uh, last season you were moved uh, from the Columbus Blue Jackets to Toronto, played a couple of playoff games for them. What was the all or nothing experience like? Obviously, it's coming out now and everything, but the whole uh, just having, I guess, cameras absolutely everywhere. What was that kind of like? For it you? honestly was, um, it wasn't as in, in our face as I thought it would be. They were there, and but they had been there the whole season, so everybody knew them. They were all friends with everybody. Um, they, you know, you could kind of chit chat with them when they weren't filming. Um, cool experience. You just gotta kind of know when you're, when the cameras are around, when they're not around. Just making sure you're not spewing some hot gossip or something <laughs> like that, or, or some, you know, kind of what you're working on or focusing yeah. on for that night. So, um, yeah, it was a cool experience. I, I, I'm interested to see the show and see how it turns out and just. Because you know you're you're in the battle and you're in you're in the heat of things, and then see how the show kind of portrays everything. Which I'm sure I've seen a couple sneak peeks, and it looks pretty darn good. So nice. um, yeah, it should be should be fun. To see if I get on camera or not. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that you're going to be a tremendous advocate for Jets TV. You're going to want us in the room for everything. <laughs> um, that's all we had for you, Riley. Thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, glad to get to know you. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for having me. Appreciate it. First ever podcast. So. There we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Easy. Shop where the players shop. Jets Gear and TrueNorthShop.com are your authentic team stores. Make sure to stock up on all your favorite Winnipeg Jets and Manitoba Moose merchandise today. Visit one of the five Jets Gear locations or shop online at truenorthshop.com. Thanks so much to Riley Nash for taking the time uh, after practice. Uh, always good to chat and get to know some of your new Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Paul, there are two preseason games left, both against the Calgary Flames. Just what does this week ahead look like for the Winnipeg Jets? They've got them at home on Wednesday and then on the road at the Saddle Dome on Friday to close out the preseason before the regular season gets underway. So just what are you looking for from the Winnipeg Jets this week? Well, at this point, Tyler, things get a little bit more serious, right? You're kind of really working your way toward October 13th in Anaheim and then that road trip and then working toward looking at the 21st at home when you open up at home. But first things first, and you're going to see a reduction in the roster uh, this week by Paul Maurice, the coaching staff and hockey operations to get back to more of a manageable group. Probably one skating group is where he would like to be. He mentioned that to us on Sunday in our one-on-one -on -one, uh, before we went on uh, 680 CJOB. So you're going to see a roster reduction. And then you're going to see probably more veterans sprinkled in with that roster reduction in those last two games against the Calgary Flames on Wednesday and Friday in Calgary, as you mentioned, respectively. So this is when you want to find that extra gear. Uh, you'll have a little bit of a rest if you're a player like Svechnikov or Harkins who have played in all four games and presumably will play in one or if not both of the remaining games to, to maybe hit all six or five of the six wouldn't be bad over the course of your opportunity that you've been given and granted to show that uh, you are an NHL player and assume one of those spots. But I think what you're going to see is more of that veteran-laden lineup for the Winnipeg Jets. And you're going to see Connor Hellebuck play one of those two games, likely Wednesday at home, and then we'll see about the travel group. But you're going to see more of, I think, less decision-making on those players and more about the veterans getting their timing down. So this is the final week before you get prepped for, for the opening of the regular season. So it's not about sort of trial and error or auditions anymore. This is about getting your group ready, your 23 or your 18 and two, if you will, to be more specific, for the opening day in Anaheim, California, coming up later this month. As Paul mentioned earlier, uh, the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Calgary Flames on Wednesday. 
Uh, you can get some great tickets available. So, uh, like you mentioned, too, lots of veterans in the lineup. Uh, tickets are available at winnipegjets.com slash tickets. Uh, Mitch, uh, sticking with the theme of the veterans, just what is sort of the goal this week for those players that know they have a spot on the roster but just are looking to get ready for Anaheim? Yeah, a lot of it comes down to timing, and I've asked Kyle Connor about this. Like, So, obviously, the game against Edmonton uh, – Throughout training camp, anyways, it's been Connor Shifley Wheeler. But that game against Edmonton, it's Connor Shifley Ehlers, which, I mean, if you're head coach Paul Maurice and you're wanting, you know, some different looks to go to, he always talks about doesn't want things to get stale. That's the power play, that's at even strength. That might be a look that we see throughout uh, the season at some point. We'll see. But if you're Connor Shifley Wheeler, you're a trio that's been together for a while, uh, a number of seasons, in fact. So, really, for you, it's building on what you did in that first preseason game, getting the timing even even more sharp. Um, just making sure that you're ready to go. Obviously, Mark Shifley will not be playing in game number one, but you would anticipate he would be in that center spot pretty much every game after that, obviously. So um, for that, for those three, that's what it's about. I'm going to be interested to see kind of how the, the next couple of lines shake out. Um, Kopp and Dubois have been kind of attached to the hip throughout camp. Obviously, Kopp and Lowry have also played together. And then it's going to be interesting to see how those lines finish out. You know, Nikolai Ehlers is a guy that obviously has played with both Kopp and Dubois at different points. Um, it'll be interesting to see what head coach Paul Maurice does with the right wing on, on Lowry's side. And then he's had Paul Stastny on the left wing of Adam Lowry through a bunch of camps. So obviously there's still some question marks. Uh, up front in terms of you know how that roster group is going to finish up but for the guys that have those established roles it's about timing and it's about uh, getting what's left of the cobwebs out and then on the back end it's just developing chemistry that's really it I mean Morrissey Schmidt as as Nate Schmidt likes to say he's been peeling back the layers of Josh Morrissey every day and that's uh, I thought the game against the Edmonton Oilers was a really good test for those two and then Brendan Dillon and, and Neil Pionk, another great duo that Paul Maurice has a lot of confidence in. So really for those for those four especially, it's about uh, cementing and uh, continuing to build on, on the chemistry that they have as they get ready for Anaheim. So really, I could have said one word. It's about timing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of time, uh, it's about time we go and just let you carry on with your day. Uh, next time you hear from us, we probably will have more answers than questions, as Mitch sort of alluded to. Uh, on behalf of myself, Tyler Esquivel, uh, Jets TV's Mitchell Clinton, and of course, 680 CGOB's Paul Edmonds. Thanks so much for listening to Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets. Have yourself a great week. Go Jets, go. This has been Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets, hosted by Jets TV. For Jets news, videos, and more, head to WinnipegJets.com.